Sandra, I want to express my sincere gratitude for everything you did yesterday. You put in a lot of effort to prepare your home for the gathering and to cook that huge meal. And it's been a long time since I saw all my in-laws. It really helped me feel whole again being around them. Please convey my thanks to Davin as well. It was because of Davin that I extended the invitation to you in the first place. He asked me why I invited all my other daughter-in-laws except you, and wondered if I'd forgotten to tell you. Honestly, I wasn't keen on inviting you over, but I suppose I had to be somewhat understanding since you are married to my son. Is that so? Well, thank you for inviting me anyway, even if it was hard for you to do. I appreciate your gesture of kindness, even if it was reluctant. Have you noticed that you stand out in this family? You're the odd one out. Do you see that there's something you lack that the others possess? Something that makes you inferior to them? What do you mean by me being different from the others? I don't understand what you're trying to say. I've had five sons, and four out of the five have brought really excellent wives into our family. They all wear really expensive clothes, and come from wealthy families. They also have really spectacular houses, and have social status. But then there's you. You are nothing like them. I suppose our house is relatively modest compared to the other residences. I've never been one to spend much on clothing. I prefer to save money for more important things. What's even more striking is that your father is a truck driver, isn't he? I'm sure he doesn't have a sense of culture to make enough money to be considered worthwhile. I guess he's low class and uneducated. Your remarks about my dad are quite harsh. In reality, my father is an amazing man. He worked from morning to night every day, and he did that to make sure I was able to get into college. Even now, he's still working hard to make sure that my mom gets to go on all those dream vacations she's been wanting. I'm sure that you viewed truckers in a pretty bad way, but my father really isn't that bad of a person at all. He just chose his profession out of a love for trucks and identifies as a diligent individual. So do you think being a good wife is easy? Because your dad's a good man? Since you seem to struggle with this concept, I'll say it just once. You lack all of the good qualities that the rest of my family has. Your appearance reflects poverty, and you don't possess any branded items to flaunt. You don't fit in with us at all. I'm sorry. Are you saying all of this because of something rude that I said to you before? I tried my best to be kind to you, so I don't see why you were coming to me like this. What did I do to offend you? This has nothing to do with that. We're discussing your lack of affluence. I can smell your lack of money from a mile away, and it's atrocious. I can see through you, even if you spray on fine perfume or wore the most elegant dress. Your poor family history has a pungent odor that is impossible to mask. You're a stain on our family's reputation. I fail to see any issue with my family's background. They are good and honest people who work hard and love me. I don't need money or brands to be happy or to be a good wife. I love Davin and he loves me. And that's all that matters to me. Let me clarify for you, fool. You're an embarrassment to my family. The way you dress, the way you smell, and the fact that you didn't come from wealth. I'm so confused why my son chose you as a wife. All of Davin's brother found exceptional partners. But what made him consider a dull individual like you? Perhaps that's because Davin is a very kind and down-to-earth type of person. He explained that he chose someone from an ordinary life like mine to escape the snobbery that surrounds your social circle. And I'm not saying that the others are worse off. All of the other wives in this family are amazing to be around as well, but... Well... Everyone has been welcoming, showing kindness to me despite my status as just a normal woman. And I can also tell that all of Davin's brothers fell really far from the tree as they don't come at me with all these negative comments. What? Are you insinuating that I'm the only one causing trouble? Making accusations like that will start a lot of unneeded drama, you know. And things will really have to get personal between the two of us. 
but you're the only one that's heckling me over petty things like money and looks. Honestly, I don't mind getting berated by these remarks from you, but you've even started roping my daughter into it. Could you stop that? You treat all the other grandkids in the family with respect. So why does my daughter have to be the only one that is harassed by you? What did she ever do to you? There are times that you'll give everyone besides her cookies, and you ignore anything she says to you most of the time. And I've overheard you in the kitchen wishing to avoid your other grandkids. I do that because she resembles you. It's hard for me to view her as one of my adorable granddaughters when she reminds me of the unsavory person who gave birth to her. Please don't single her out like that. Do you realize that many in the family observe your mistreatment of her? You treat her worse than the other kids. The others are nice enough to not play along with you and make sure to treat her with the respect she deserves. But because of how ruthless you are with her, anytime she is having fun, it's ruined by how you treat her. I'm really tired of seeing this happen to her, and I'd like it to stop. Who do you think you are speaking to me like this? It's these outbursts that make me detest you. Honestly, you're too inferior for me to engage with. But I must protect myself and my daughter. If I see you messing with her again, I'm going to start getting the men involved. And what can they do against the queen of the family? They're my own sons. They wouldn't raise a finger against me. However, I could probably turn them against you. Just suggesting that their mother needs help would suffice to rally them against you. And if you and that daughter of yours were never around, my family would be at peace. So do us a favor and disappear from my sight, both of you. No, thank you. I'm not doing this to make an enemy out of you. I want us all to become a united, happy family. Please understand, I'm not looking for a fight. But your actions are making life difficult for my daughter and I. Man, you are just the worst. You think you can alter my perception by pretending that you and your daughter can be part of my family. There will never be a day that I see you as my family. And the sooner you two start to realize that, the sooner the rest of us can enjoy our lives. Are you saying that I lack the competence to manage my own grandchildren? Don't be so absurd. I already have the experience of raising all five of my boys under my belt. And they were quite a handful at times. I know how to handle children better than anyone else. However, this time there will be three times as many kids present. Each of your kids has sizable families with three to four children. If you add all of them up, that's going to be 15 very energetic kids. With all those kids running around, do you really think that you can deal with them by yourself? Don't you think you need some help from someone else? My eldest son secured passes for Six Flags, and I don't want those tickets to go to waste. I'm sure you're just jealous of the fact that you aren't invited and won't be able to see what a real amusement park looks like. Anyway, I'm retired now. So I have the time to take my grandbabies to the park. I don't need anyone else to interfere with my plans. But I'm concerned about your vision. It's not as sharp as before. Plus, considering the number of kids, using a car won't be feasible. I heard you're flying with them? How are you going to keep an eye on them at the airport and on the plane? What if something happens to them? I've heard enough from you. I possess the experience I require. I managed to raise five kids, so if it's 10 or 15 kids, it's all the same. At this point, they're all in middle school. The younger just started sixth grade. Given their exceptional mothers they have, they should all be well behaved by now. I could understand needing assistance if they were still toddlers, but they're old enough to follow instruction and stay close to me. That's right, for the most part. Everyone is in middle school now. However, when they get excited, I'm afraid you really will be dealing with a strong force. They could start running around, making it hard to keep track of them. They might get lost or hurt themselves. You can't be everywhere at once. 
All my grandkids were raised to heed to my instructions. They wouldn't stray if I asked them to. The only kid I'm worried about is the one that was born into a poor mother's family. It would almost be preferable if she ran away. But I doubt she has the courage to do so. Ah, oh, you don't need to worry about her. Maddie is very good with staying calm and not straying away from the adults. She may have my looks, but she is a lot more like my parents. She was respectful and obedient, unlike some of the other kids. I could have sworn she looked and acted just as poorly as you. She always wears cheap clothes and doesn't have any friends. She doesn't seem to enjoy anything in life. She's just a dull and miserable child. I'm thankful that you're willing to take all the kids on a trip to Six Flags, but don't overexert yourself. You are not as young as you used to be, and you might get tired or sick from all the stress and excitement. Please take care of yourself and the kids. I don't need you worrying about me. I don't need some loser like you thinking about me. I want to use this trip as a good way of letting all the kids make great memories with their loving grandma. Having the chance to take all my grandkids out like this will slowly start to become more and more rare, right? They'll grow up and have their own lives and be too busy for me. That's true. As I said, I'm truly grateful for your efforts. You are doing something very generous and kind for the kids. They will definitely appreciate it and remember it for a long time. Your thanks are nothing. It's nearly as good as not hearing thanks at all. If you really want to thank me, work on becoming a better daughter-in-law, improving your appearance, your income, your education, and your manners. Maybe I'll consider you worthy of being a part of this family then. I'm exhausted, but luckily I was able to make all sorts of great memories. It was such a fun and exciting trip to Six Flag with all my grandkids. I'm sure they enjoyed it just as much as I did. Thank you once again, Sandra. I'm glad you made it out okay. Have all the kids gone home now? I hope they're all safe and sound. Their homes are nearby, so I had them walk back on their own. They're middle schoolers now. They should know the way. Oh, there's one thing. Hmm, did you forget something at the park? Did you leave behind your purse or your phone? You could put it that way. I believe I left Maddie at Six Flags. I'm sure by this point she'll be bowling her eyes out looking for us. Huh? But Maddie is at home with me right now. She arrived just a few minutes ago. That can't be right. How'd she get back so fast? I'm being serious. She came back saying she had a fantastic time at the theme park. She said she loved the rides and the shows and the food. But I made sure to leave her there before we left. I told her to go to the bathroom, and then I snuck away with the rest of the kids. Made sure to? Sandra, were you intentionally trying to leave Maddie there all by herself? That's horrible. That's why I said I made a mistake. I meant to say that I forgot her there. I must have mistyped him. Before you left, did you make sure to get a head count of all your grandkids? Was everyone with you before you went back to the airport? I think. I didn't have time to check everyone's faces, but I counted the number of heads, and it seemed right. You think? In other words, did you mistakenly leave another child at the park instead of Maddie? Hmm. I think everyone came home with me after the park. I don't remember seeing anyone missing. Just to be sure, I'm going to ask the others about their kids. I have to make sure that everyone came home from that trip. I told you, everyone's home. You don't need to bother them with your silly questions. But when you answered my question, you said you thought everyone returned, right? Since you mentioned ensuring you left someone there and it wasn't Maddie, I need to get to the bottom of this. What I just said was a huge mistake, that's all. I didn't mean to leave anyone behind. I love all my grandkids equally. But what if you did accidentally leave one of your grandchildren behind? What if they're in danger of being kidnapped or in an accident? What if they're scared and lonely and crying for you? 
You're just overthinking is all. There's no way I'd do such thing. I'm a responsible and caring grandmother. I just received a reply from your third oldest son's wife. She said that her youngest girl, Lisa, hasn't come home yet. But I don't know any of that. Perhaps she got lost on her way back home. She's always been a bit of a wanderer. But it seems her brothers have returned home safely. Right now, she's getting her husband to come home. And they are all going to start searching the neighborhood for her. They will even start asking everyone that they see if they saw a little girl that looked lost or without a parent. I'll head over to her house as well. Maybe I can help find her. There's a possibility she's simply lost and might find her way back to your place. Hang tight for a while. I'll inform the others too. Maybe someone else saw her or knows where she is? Is everything okay now? Were they able to find my lost grandchild? I'm so worried about her. My goodness, I hope she's safe and not hurt. All the men have taken a flight to Six Flags to initiate the search for her. Everyone made sure to let the theme park and the police know that she was missing. For now, please stay at home and wait for any updates. Please hurry up and find her, okay? I can't bear the thought of losing her. She's my precious granddaughter. Sandra, do you realize how horrible of a thing you did to your own family? Right now, Lisa's mom and dad are both super pissed at you. To the point that you shouldn't come out of your house. They are blaming you for everything that happened. But I didn't intend to leave her behind on purpose. It was an honest mistake. I thought she was Maddie. That's because you confused her with my daughter, right? Both Maddie and Lisa are of similar height, and they happen to be wearing similar clothing today. Your eyes have gotten really bad lately, so you probably couldn't tell the difference, huh? Had you not made this mistake, this whole situation might have revolved around my daughter, right? You wanted to get rid of her, didn't you? I never meant for any child to be in danger. I believe someone will find her and take her to the police station or the park's office, right? Why is it taking everyone so long to find her? Well, just a bit ago, the staff was asking people around the park if they've seen a lost girl. And one of the taxi drivers outside of the park mentioned he spotted someone who looked like her. He said the last place he saw her was about 10 minutes outside the park. How did she end up that far away? Did she follow someone else? She might have assumed that the rest of you were outside waiting for her. So when she didn't find you, she continued further out. But just to let you know, he said that when he saw her last, she was with another man, and they were walking off somewhere. Who was it? That guy. Did, did he kidnap her? Well, no one knows. Everyone is worried that she may have been kidnapped. When Lisa's parents heard that, they both fell to the floor crying and screaming. Then hurry and notify the police about this. Tell them to find that man and rescue my grandchild. That's why I told you. We got the police involved. We don't have to wait for you to tell us what to do. We already know how to handle these situations. We gave them the description of the man and the taxi driver's license plate number. Well, then I'm going to head back over there and help everyone out. I can't wait here any longer. I need to see her with my own eyes. Please do not come over here. If you arrive now, I can't predict how Lisa's parents might react upon learning you left her there on purpose. Everyone, and I mean everyone, knows that you were the one that started all this. I made sure to show everyone the messages you sent me about thinking you forgot Maddie there. I know that. I want to take responsibility and help with the search. I never expected things to escalate this far. I thought she'd be found quickly and everything would be fine. What did you think would happen to leave a middle school girl at a huge theme park all by herself? Even if the original plan was to leave my girl there instead of Lisa. 
The fear and worry are all the same. I wanted to scare your daughter, since you were so rude to me. I thought this could be my chance to make you feel a little pain after all the complaining. Because of that, you thought leaving a child at the park would even the playing field again? If it really did end up that you left Maddie there, things would only get a lot worse between us. I'd actually be forced to make you my enemy at that point. I think it's a good thing you're taking responsibility for this. But you really screwed up thinking that doing something as outrageous as this was okay. You really are so clueless. Everything about you disgusts me. I get it. I wasn't raised in some well-off family like the rest of you were. I'm sure that you were raised in some large mansion with waiters and maids standing around to fill your every need. But the way you've been acting, it doesn't seem like you got the best education back in your day. I was a foster child, you know. Oh, so your birth parents deemed you unworthy of their family? Then that must mean that you aren't good enough for us either. Shut the hell up! Don't make me come over there! I'm really upset with you right now. I used to think I'd like to bridge the gap between us. But your actions this week have shattered any hope of that. I've heard from the other moms that they all think the same thing and will start to stay as far away from you as they can from now on. Not only that, but my husband and his brothers are thinking of doing the same thing. Why? What did I do to deserve this? Please tell everyone to rethink this. Even if they wanted to, you already made your pathetic character clear to all of us, especially to your oldest son and his wife. They don't even want to acknowledge your existence anymore. When their daughter was born, they cared deeply for her and made sure that you knew that. If anything happened to her, they knew they'd never be able to forgive the person who hurt her. So that means they are seriously going to cut ties with me? Well, even if they don't, things will never be the same with you guys ever again. And I speak for all of us in saying that even if Lisa makes it back okay... But why do I have to be the one treated like this? Where did that go? Why didn't I realize my mistake by leaving the wrong child behind? Sandra, does this mean the task was too much for you to handle? Taking care of all your grandkids at the theme park? You couldn't even keep a good head count throughout the trip. Well, everyone kept running around, so it was getting more and more difficult for me to watch everyone. I ended up having them all split up into four groups, then making the oldest watch over the rest. But when we're getting ready to leave, they were all too energetic and acting crazy. I was never going to be able to get a good count on them. Well, it's not just your fault. We all messed up as well, letting you take the kids out like that. From now on, we won't let you watch over our kids. You won't have to worry about them again. Never? To be honest, most of us wouldn't even permit you to see our kids anymore. And that's not just coming from me. We all feel the same way about you. So I won't ever get to see my grandkids again? Not even once? Sorry. But anyway, I need to return to helping everyone search for Lisa. Well, is there anything that I can help you guys with? I'll do anything to make sure she's alright. Please! Just stay home and pray for her safe return. That's about all we are going to allow you to do from now on. It seems that your plan to get me and my daughter to stay away from the family backfired on you. After a long and agonizing search, we finally found Lisa safe and sound. The man who was seen with her was not a kidnapper, but a kind stranger who helped her calm down and locate her family. He took her to a nearby police station, where they contacted other officers who were looking for her. They assured us that he had no ill intentions and that he was just trying to help. He said that he saw her crying and calling out the names of her cousins and he felt sorry for her. This incident brought our family closer together and made us realize how much we care for each other. 
One of the things that helped us bond was our mutual decision to cut off any contact with Sandra, that horrible woman who caused all this trouble. At first, the other wives tried to talk some sense into her and make her apologize for her mistreatment of Maddie and me, but she refused to listen. She was stubborn and cruel, and she didn't care about anyone but herself. But this time, she crossed the line. And not only her sons and daughter-in-law were angry with her, but also her own husband. He was so disgusted by her actions that he asked for a divorce and told her to never see him again. In the end, Sandra was left alone and isolated from our family. No one wanted to have anything to do with her and everyone blocked her from their phones and social media. She had no friends, no allies, and she got what she deserved. My husband became closer to his brothers, and Maddie started to spend more time with her cousins. They all love her and treat her well, and she is happy. To me, this is like a dream come true, seeing my family grow and connect. I don't know where Sandra is now, but... I hope she realizes how much pain she inflicted on us, not just me and Maddie.